I'm going to measure um, the alkalinity of the water. Just a simple um, alkalinity test kit. Just grab a grab sample of water off the surface. And if you remember back to your general chemistry class, we're just going to do a, a quick and dirty titration in the boat. And the amount of titrant that we use is going to tell us our alkalinity level. So you use phenolphthalein as your reagent here. Katie was one of those students that actually did really well in chemistry. That's not true, actually. Chemistry was my struggle bus. Whatever, it was titrant. Give that a swirl, get that dissolved. You need a blue one, a green one. Put that in first. But the idea you keep, you put it in there, you swirl it, and it'll start to flip from green to red. What you're doing is you're dropping an acid into a buffered solution to see how much buffering capacity is in there, which is alkalinity. So she's counting how many drops it takes to start to flip that over to, to pink. How many are you up to now? Eight. Alkalinity is wildly important. It's become one of the most important things we look at. So alkalinity is simply the, the ability of the water to buffer swings in pH. So if alkalinity is low, it means the lake doesn't have a buffering capacity. So you get swings in pH going up and down, which we measured pH in here. I told you fish can adapt to a lot of pHs, but they really don't like it when it's swinging up and down. So a lake like this one that has moderate alkalinity means that photosynthesis, all those changes that could potentially affect pH are buffered by the, just the capacity of the water to buffer it. So what are you at? 31. Yeah, that's alkalinity through the roof. But that's me, you stop when I... So about two more drops and it'll turn neon pink. 32, <laughs> it's pretty pink. One more. Now we're neon pink. But I'll go with your number because you're more precise. 32? Yep. 